Anyone from this area will know that it's hard to have a garden because deer tend to dine on all sorts of plants, including deer resistant ones. Instead of putting fences around all the different trees and garden beds on the land, we will be utilizing a pre-existing 15 acre deer fence that was used to deter deer from nibbling on the container plants at the old nursery. The fence, however, was broken in quite a few areas and we never got around to fixing it when we got on the land last fall, so we unfortunately had quite a bit of deer damage on the plants by the time spring rolled around. The plan was to hire a contractor to help us fix the fence and then extend it further into the forest so we could get some forest regeneration. Since the overpopulation of deer has really decimated native wildflowers, shrubs, and tree seedlings, leaving wide open spaces for invasive plants like Japanese honeysuckle, multiflora rose, and knotweed to move in, therefore creating a tangle of invasives and forever changing the ecosystem for other critters. Though the plan was to get the fence up by this fall, the contractor couldn't commit to a date, so it left us with no other choice than to start putting up a temporary fence ourselves, which actually, with a little bumbling and trial and error, turned out to be a pretty easy solution. Um, <laughs> we are gonna put a fence up because we don't want the deer to come in. We have a deer fence because this used to be a nursery, but as you can see, well, maybe not in this section. This section looks pretty good, but it's, it's fallen apart in a couple places and it's incomplete because we used to have a gate here, which is the old gate, which doesn't really work well in the winter because it's a swing gate, which means that if it's uh, closed in the winter and there's a bunch of snow on the ground and the doors open like this, that's obviously not gonna work. So we installed a new gate and that gate's further down the road. So we need to actually extend that deer fence all the way to the road. Now we hired a contractor and we put half of the money down to get them to build us a fence, not the entire fence that we want because it's super expensive to have this done. You gotta look at maybe like 20 to 30 bucks per foot of fence that they're charging us. So it gets really expensive if you wanna go a really long run. So we intended to just first do a small section and then uh, just fix the rest with the temporary fence. And then maybe in the future when we can afford it, we either build our own fence or we pay for an extension of that fence. So right now, the contractor is not giving us a date for when he can actually come and install the fence. So we need a quick temporary solution that's gonna hold us over uh, in the meantime, uh, before all our plants are getting eaten by the deer this winter. So what we're gonna do is we reached out to Deer Busters and they were so generous enough to send us a box and some fence. The box has all, this, all these tools in it to actually put a fence up. And we're gonna see if we can put up a temporary fence with no experience, uh, maybe like 200 feet. Uh, see if we can do it. Yeah, and I think uh, we were very fortunate because we saw this fence in action at Cornell and they were using oh, yes. it and they had recommended it. So the deer exclusion episodes that we did with Cornell, they obviously had the fancy fence, the metal one, which is probably the one that works for the longest time. But then they also had a, just a temporary plastic fence. You know, cause the metal fence is really heavy. Like this material here that you see, let's get closer. This is a uh, welded wire or cattle wire or whatever they call it. Yep. Uh, it's not ideal because as you can see it rusts and you know, it doesn't last as long. There's another version of this which is woven wire, which is much better. The wires are not welded and they're also sometimes covered in a little film that helps protect it from getting rust rusted and stuff. Uh, this is only six feet tall and then we have some barbed wire up top here. Which is not something that we really enjoy. Which is not like, ideal because yeah. A wire would just work fine enough anyways. So, uh, and this rusts as well. And it looks like a prison over here, you know, <laughs> with this wire. So what we want to do is we want to put up, you know, an eight feet metal fence. And, um, but temporarily we're going to put up an eight feet plastic fence, which should be a lot lighter because this stuff is really heavy when you roll it up. It's almost, you can't lift it. You need a, you need a proper machine, something like a skid steer to hold it for you as you roll it up or unwind it so 
Yeah, I'm gonna get some of the materials. Let's do it. And see if we can get started with this fence. Okay. So we have the plastic line. So this is the deluxe kit. Uh, it comes with a tool for crimping. Wow, it looks cool. Yeah, that looks pretty heavy duty. Uh, this tool apparently tensions a line. Look how awesome this tool is. Oh wow, it looks like, an, looks like a beak. So first the, the line goes in here. And then as you squeeze it, it will grab the line first here at the top. Oh yeah, and it ratchets and it's like, it in. Ah, pull it. Yeah. It's really funny. These are metal stakes to keep the fence close to the ground. These are all kinds of like eye hooks to put on posts. And we're, we might not actually use these today because we're gonna be using some of the trees that are here as posts. Because putting in posts is probably the most the biggest part of the work that you have to do for putting in a fence. But since there's lots of trees here and some trees that might actually have to go because they're not so healthy, uh, we might as well use them as posts. And this tool, supposedly, so there will be a thin, that monofilament wire will be on top. It will be under tension. So it's a strong wash line, basically. Yeah, like a clothesline. And then you could just hang the fence on it which we'll show you in a little bit. And then this is the tool that you use to attach the plastic fabric fence to the monofilament line. Man, I'm so glad you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then these are some of the uh, little hooks uh, that this machine takes. And as soon as you well, that's shoot cool. it. They look like a uh, staple. Like a yeah, staple it, it's like a staple gun. If you ever used one of those staplers, very similar. I mean, we needed actually this fence enough. anyway because we weren't going to do a full length of a yeah. fancy fence. We were just Sondra we're just going to put it in in a different place because yeah. the contractor hasn't finished, so we're going to just take a shortcut. But the great thing is, is if they do come before the end of the year, we will remove the temporary fence uh, and then we could reuse it, which is great too. And then this is the gate that you'll see here, but right now the gate's not really working well to keep deer out because <laughs> you know even if it's closed here. The deer can just go like this. <laughs> go around the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, so Wait, these more. are the little things that are gonna get crimped. So oh. that line goes in here, goes around a post, comes back, and then you uh, squeeze like this nose. together. <laughs> you squeeze this together, <laughs> and that holds the line real tight. That's one way to do it. Well, that's the proper way to do it, probably. Then you also have this thing, which you can use to tie together two ends of a line. So this works like a ratchet. You put one part of the line goes through here, the other part goes through here, and then you just pull on them, and then that tightens the string, and then there will be a lot of tension. And we don't have to pull by hand. This tool is gonna help us with that. But hopefully we'll see this in action. Yeah. We have two parts of the fence. So we first have to run it from this corner to this gate. And then from this side of the gate to another corner of the fence. And the way we're planning this is we want to make sure that we don't really have much corners because if a deer approaches the corner, it's going to feel like it's stuck and it might want to hit the fence to try to get out or try to get through. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the shape of the entire fence is kind of rounded so that when they encounter the fence, they can just kind of keep going and they just are div diverted to a different area. So instead of running it straight here, we're gonna run it at an angle so that we meet at the corner so we don't create any 90 degree angles, so. Perfect. Let's, let's get do going. It. All right. And the last part is the actual fence. Hi. Oh, geez. That's easier to carry though, probably, than all that metal stuff we have. So yeah, we also have some metal fences don't even start, don't even try carrying those. That's why, it's, that, that's why we hired a contractor to help yeah. us. <laughs> so the whole idea behind this is, it's just too, like, it's too difficult to put in a metal fence on your own without any machinery and equipment. So you either need to have uh, a contractor or you have machinery to do this. So we, we don't have both at the moment. <laughs> that's why we have this fence. 
Deer Busters is saving our ass <laughs> or saving our plants. <laughs> so, whoa. So this is eight foot, 330 feet long. So, yeah. Yeah, the trident, the trident fence, I believe it is. Yep. And then, uh, and it's nice, the black actually supposedly like fades into the background, so. Yeah, you don't really see it. Even our, uh, even our existing fence with the metal wire, you don't really see it. it kind of blends in. So those tools were from Deer Busters. We also have some of our own tools here that I thought would be helpful to bring out. Um, a tripod for time lapses. <laughs> um, be a long time lapse. <laughs> we found some. Uh, we found some of these metal posts on the property. We might not have enough trees from here to there, so we might have to put in a couple posts. And that's pretty simple. Just get on a ladder, get this thing, hit it really hard on the top a couple times, and then hopefully it'll go into the ground. Hopefully we can reuse those. Yeah, we upcycled as many as we could on the land that we found. I also have pieces of wood, off cuts because if we put that monofilament line around some of these trees, it might cut into the bark. We don't want that, so this will help spread out the, the, the wire a bit. All kinds of tools to cut existing wire. Ear protection for when we hammer those posts. And some tiny little hooks that we might put in some trees to let that uh, line go through. And stainless steel. And it's stainless steel so it doesn't rust because ideally you don't put holes in your trees and especially don't put nails in it or screws in it that could rust because that can introduce a lot of disease. So hopefully that won't hurt the tree too much. I like, this. I like this toolbox. Yeah, you like the toolbox. <laughs> the tape measure for measuring eight feet because our fence is eight feet, I believe. Uh, yeah, it said it on the packaging. Let's just False advertising, no. Let's just double check. Oh, it's actually taller than eight feet. It's 103 inches. Nice. So, yeah, so that's 96 great. would be eight. Because then we can put the line at eight feet, but then have on the, on the bottom, we can have part of it like which, slope up to the ground. Which is what they did at, at Cornell, yeah. because what is it, extra billow at the end. And we have some zip ties, which oh, we perfect. might need at some point. So that's it for tools. Let's start building this fence. First we'll thread this through here. Then we'll go around the pole. This is about seven foot high. And we need the extra foot down below because as you see, it goes, the elevation drops here a little bit. So I'm going around the post here and then I'm just looping this wire back oh, yeah. through the same thing. And then I'm gonna make it as tight as I can around this post. So it's really quick. The idea is that this could be done in a couple it's like doing a necktie. A couple hours. So we get this big ass tool. Isn't that what you said for running the thousand foot of internet uh, cable? Oh, it'd yeah, take a it take a couple and hours. It took like 12. All right, now I'm on it. Okay, I'm walking it out. Yeah, I think we just need to squeeze it a little bit. Okay. Damn it. You want me to help that with that? Well, try. How? I don't know. <laughs> So you don't need to squeeze it all the way, you just gotta squeeze it a little bit. Let me just put it on here. Um, why don't you hold this against the post okay, yeah. so it doesn't move and yeah. then I'll push this. Just flatten it like that. It just takes a lot of oomph to, to get, to really like get this to go like that. Let's measure how tall this is. Eight feet to the top, so we should be able to get to the top of that thing. First, drill a little hole. Put this thing in. I'm just using a screwdriver to drive this through. There we go. Issue is that now we need to feed this line through that loop. Right. But this is not gonna fit through the loop. So oh, first yeah. we need to we need to get the full length of this thing figured out first. Which you can easily do by walking this out. Yeah. And we need someone to cut it with. You need so to do the grab. extra. And if we cut it too short we can always join those end sections. 
Where oh. we have to run it through the forest is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's going to be a lot longer. Yes, it is. That's why we're doing this to For start. Now these posts were here with a, an original deer fence that we had. Um, it was covered in multiflora rose. Some of that multiflora rose got so heavy it was actually taking down the fence. So we ended up cleaning up and taking down this fence to start. But knowing that we needed these posts to put another fence in. Again, this is where the contractor was supposed to come in and, and put this fence. Let's try to do the same thing we did here where we loop the wire around. Okay. But we'll feed it through here first and then come back and feed it through here. See if we can tension that. Would that work? I guess it would. Let's try it out. I'm doing this for the first time anyways. Gotta learn how to do it. Trial and error. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, it's starting to come together. So I'm gonna try putting this through this thing first. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see this, can you? A little bit, yeah. It goes in the big hole and it comes out of that smaller hole. And once it goes through, it can't go back. So now that I have that over here, I wanna make this line go around it. Oh, I see, and yeah. And shove it through the other way. And how come you didn't do that on the other side? Uh -huh. <laughs> Felt like using the difficult crimp tool. <laughs> you gotta test both tools, yeah? Maybe we'll find out why. <laughs> why you didn't do it on the other side. Okay, well this seems well, like it's promising. working somehow. Yeah. See, I, that's why I told you I like this. I like the way this tool thinks. It's cool. But as I'm as I'm lifting this up, yep. you see it's grabbing the wire. Yeah, and it's pulling it through. And then okay. as I'm pulling this, oh, you yeah. see how it's pulling it through? Yep. Ooh, mm -hmm. do you hear the tension? Yeah. Brrr. That's good. Yeah. Brrr. I want some of that. <laughs> I don't know how much tension I should put on this thing. I think there's also a, oh yeah, look at this. There's a, uh, a really cool scale oh, yeah, that I don't that. even know what that means, but it's probably I'm just, like some kind of tension meter. Yeah, so I can't see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna tension it till I feel like it's until tight you, enough to hold a plastic fence. Until you can zip line down it. Zip line. <laughs> Maybe Woo! that's how that's how I'll get down from this ladder. <laughs> Ooh, this is cool. Yeah? Yeah, you see? This is how yeah. we can fix some of the older fence, too. We just put a wire on top and then uh, make that wire go, like, above the old fence where the barbed wire is broken. Yeah, this is great. It's going to be a shame if we have to take this down now when I'm seeing the effort. Well, the idea is that this is more movable, yeah. easy to take down. Let's start with this. We can always come in here and, and tighten it further. Yeah, that's so, right. I wish we did it on the other side I love that this way. tool. This yeah. is so much better than the crimping. I know. Oh. So this looks good. It's got some tension. Uh, obviously, the more posts you have, the better it is for that line um, to have some support. Otherwise, it's going to be like sagging. All right, well, let's, um, let's put, figure out the next step, which is putting on the fence which is gonna be interesting. Yeah, how are we gonna cut this? I don't know. <laughs> I think we'll just put it up like this, attach it to the pole first, okay. and then start unrolling it. And then... You might need my help for that, with that. You think so? <laughs> I'll leave you two alone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Saunders prom date right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wanna dance? Okay. Yeah, that's quite a bit taller than uh Yeah. Which is good because she's over, a tall one. She's a tall girl. She's a tall girl. Uh, over here. It's gonna be real good. See? 
Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Uh, that okay. The oh, yeah, that's great. So that's what we need. Yep. Back to the start. <laughs> How much yeah. do you think that weighs? I don't know. <laughs> it's not that heavy. Okay, first we got to attach this uh, to the pole here somehow. I think zip ties would be zip good Zip ties, for yeah, I was gonna say zip ties. But I don't know if these are long enough. I might have to grab the other ones. I picked these up the other day. I just had a feeling I would need them one day. That's so good. And here we go. Without, oh, oh. whoa, oh, maybe, just... you, maybe you hold, oh, oh boy. Oh. Uh, I was gonna try to hold it between my legs. <laughs> Instead you pushed it. I know. Okay, let me put this down. Okay, that will hold the top. Okay. Now let's uh, let's move this whole fence to the next post. Like roll Slowly it out. Slowly unroll it. Okay. My audio is getting crushed. Is that going? Yep. Is it hard? No. No, it's light. It, it, well, it is heavy. It's not yeah. hard. Okay, maybe uh, stop there for a second. Okay. We'll see what we can do here to tie this up against this a bit better. I guess some parts of our line are not that straight, mm -hmm. so we'll have to figure out how to properly do this. I think now's a good time to figure out that tool that attaches the top. If you're okay ha hanging in there, I guess I'm gonna have to. You just lean against it. These little th rings, they slide right in here. And then they go all the way around the corner to this tool. And then that locks back in. So there's some pressure behind it. So the teeth are pointing up. And then I guess when I push this, see how it closes that little ring? And now we have a little triangle. That's really cool. Okay, should probably go back to helping someone <laughs> out. <laughs> Alright. Sorry to leave you hanging. Awesome. Oh, nice. It's like we're hanging party decorations. <laughs> you know who's not invited. Which I never do. You never the deer. know who's invited. <laughs> Mr. Deer, not invited. <laughs> Mr. Deer, not invited. <laughs> Nice. That looks quite good at it the looks top. good, yeah. So what we just do is we clip more of these little rings on it. Mm -mm, look at this fence. Yeah. Oh, that uneven here. You gotta make sure you have both of these selected. Selected. <laughs> Sound like a video editor right now. <laughs> Uh, and then you just gotta hit select the both frames. Select both frames <laughs> and hit the. Get your plug in out. <laughs> get your plug in and hit this button. Make sure you got a license for it. There we go. Oh, great. This is awesome. It is. Look at this. Wow. This is pretty strong already. We haven't even tied it down to the yeah. bottom yet. So this is just great for temporary stuff because. It, you know how easy it would be to just clip those little rings off and then you could roll this back up and then you take your monofilament lying down by just cutting it and then you just put it up somewhere else. Honestly, the hardest part was using that first tool. The hardest part was the crim tool. Yeah. Which you don't even have to use. You, have, you could use the other one too. Right. You can't even see this. It really does kind of blend out into the background. Yeah, well with any kind of fence that's black. Yeah. Or like the metal one. It just kind of disappears. This this gate here is is the type of material that you really see. Yeah. Because it's like bright aluminum, but anything that's more subdued just we, disappears. We wanted to get that in black, but it was just so much more extraordinarily expensive, 
And um, we figured, well, well, we'll try to dress it up at another time. So what do you think of this? Can we pin it down with yeah. some stakes? Yeah. Okay, we may have hit a snag. Okay, we hit a problem. We put this line way too high. There's like a foot or so on the bottom that yeah. is too much. So we're gonna try to get the hook out and make it lower. So when you make your line, make sure you actually measure properly where, how, how tall it needs to be from the ground. New hole. Hammer. Screw. Pretend it's a nail. Snap. And uh, nothing happened. Nothing, like nothing ever happened. Nothing it was always wrong. there. Yeah, it's actually in there pretty well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not the strongest connection in the world, but it will do for now. A hold is first season. Yes. And then uh, we should continue to put this up, I guess. Okay, that holds it for now. On to the next one. Let's get this bottom to look right. Yeah, that looks like, that looks decent right there. Yeah. Put some nails in here. Yeah, because once we put the pins in down here. That summer's gonna demonstrate how some of these pins work. So this, the idea behind this is that it the deer don't, are not able to come in to the bottom. There you go. Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. okay, let's do the rest. All right, so I think we're mostly done with this. Here's a couple things that we learned. I think it looks really good. And I'm hopefully, hopefully it's gonna keep the deer out. It, I, I feel like we are able to get it much straighter if we were working with posts that were straight and if we were working with landscape that was also straight. This is such a weird hilly terrain with some of these old posts that one is really short, the other one's really long. I think it just, it just gives us some of these weird spots in the fence where you get this like bulge and we're not quite sure how to get rid of that. Like we could pull it in a certain direction. You almost need another post that comes in a little bit Really, more. you just need another post. Yeah. And I feel like when you get the metal posts that actually come with this fence, you put them much closer together and I think that will help a lot. And if they're also straight, it will help a lot. So I think the lesson from this is make sure that you put all your posts in as straight as you can and that you work with you know, a straight landscape. And then uh, another thing that we learned is that we put the fence on this side of the post. And now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be easier for a deer to push the fence off the post this way yeah. than if it were to be on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a board and I'm just gonna put the board against this pole right here and just nail it in. And that will sandwich the fence together uh, between, between the two boards. And hopefully that will hold it better. So we're just adding in these uh, old garden bed boards that are half rotten. <laughs> we kind of sandwich the fence so that it's just a little stronger if someone tries to like push through this, like a deer that wants to push through it, it's gonna have a hard time. It's reinforcement. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it's got ground stakes, so you're able to tie it to the ground which is more successful over there than here because this is mostly wood chips. So I think we'll add some other things to make like a barrier for the deer not to be able to get underneath here, probably like pieces of wood and stuff. But other than that, I think it's a really quick and great solution for temporary fence. And you might, make, you might be able to make this work for a permanent fence as well, but if you have straight posts at least, <laughs> uh, yeah. We're working with what we have, so I think uh, for this it's, it's fairly adequate and we'll see if it lasts for a season at least. Yeah, 
So uh, we'll finish this up and hopefully we'll do the other section too and we'll, we'll show you what that looks like. Thanks again to DeerBusters.com for sponsoring this video. Now if you're looking for an easy and affordable do-it-yourself alternative to a metal fence, then we encourage you to check out their Trident Fencing and Tensioning Kit over at DeerBusters.com.